Now, in a past video, I went over some of the differences in build quality and materials and fitment of a Holtzbruck or Holtzfors axe versus a Gramsfors Brooks axe. Today, I decided to do a redux of this video that is similar, but adding the budget brand of Husqvarna. Now, the similarity that these axes all share, or I should say axe and two hatchets share, is that they are all supposedly handmade or hand forged in Sweden. Now, I can definitely believe that, but the quality, especially between the Husqvarna in the Holtzbruck and Grand Forsbruck uh, axes are pretty big. So let's talk about that. And ultimately, let's have a discussion quickly about what your money is going to get you. Now, before we jump into these individual axes, I want to explain at least what I've seen, what I've experienced in the axe world as a general rule. And that is that by and large, and there are some exceptions to the rule as per always with this uh, field, um, but generally, if you want to spend less money on an axe or a hatchet or any type of woodworking tool, you will have to do more work to make that tool work for you or to make it fit your needs. But if you spend more money, you will have to let go of that hard-earned cash or a little bit more of it, but by and large, you have to do less to that individual tool to make it work. So you have to kind of pick your poison. Do you want to either spend the time and the man hours making that tool right for you, or do you just want to spend the money up front and have the tool work right from the beginning? Now, like I said, there are exceptions to this, and some people genuinely enjoy the intimacy that's formed when you actually go into making the handle of your axe or, you know, repo reprofiling the blade of your axe or your hatchet. Some people genuinely enjoy that journey and, like I said, that intimacy that's formed with the tool. Now, I'm not going to say that it's right or wrong either way. Everyone has their own opinion and difference, and that's totally acceptable. However, I am going to break down and and I'm going to explain why this is the same with Husqvarna versus Grand Forest Brooks or Holtzbruck. So let's jump into it. So as I mentioned, the Husqvarna here is a substantially more budget-oriented tool. Now this uh, Husqvarna, I'm actually going to set the GBA aside for the moment, is actually the same size or approximately the same size as this Holtzbruck. The only difference is that this Holtzbruck is well over a hundred dollars whereas this Husqvarna here comes in at, depending on Amazon's feelings, it can come in at under forty dollars. I know myself I got this for about thirty eight dollars. So under forty dollars for this hatchet and well over a hundred dollars for this hatchet. And what is the difference? Well, you'll immediately tell that instead of having a full sheath like the Holtzbruck, you're just given a very simple mask. And that's okay, it's still made out of good leather, and you still have a hand-forged head. However, the primary difference between these two comes when you unsheath them. So you can take a good look at that Holtzbruck head, and or Holtz, <laughs> that Husqvarna head, and I'm gonna uncover this Holtzbruck. Now, like I said, much better sheath on this Holtzbruck, but you can immediately tell that the grinds are substantially different. Now, to an untrained eye, there may not seem like there's much difference between these two edges, or obviously there's an, some form of grind difference, but what is the performance loss or gain? And truly, when you, you come to an axe like this or a hatchet like this, as I've mentioned in past videos, the biggest thing that I dislike about this is its level of unrefinement. And I want to stress the level of unrefinement because when a tool, especially something like a hatchet or an axe, is unrefined, what ends up happening is you have to do more work when you use that tool. Or, as a matter of fact, the tool is less efficient or effective at its job. It's kind of like a dull knife versus a sharp knife. When you have something that's a very unrefined edge, even though it may be reasonably sharp, until it hits these rocks, even though it may be reasonably sharp, 
because of how thick or how heavy the tool is, it causes you to be less effective and efficient. It also can cause early fatiguing. I can tell immediately when I hold this hatchet here that due to the fact that it has a profiled head with ears, it still has a lot of the support that this ax would have, but they've managed to cut some of the weight out of this hatchet's overall head, which means that over the course of time when I'm using it, I can do more strokes before my muscles fatigue with this tool as opposed to this tool. In addition, with this high polished, with this high and polished Scandinavian grind on this Holzbruch, what's gonna happen is even though this isn't my favorite Scandinavian grind, it's still very sharp and it's still ground this way and it's going to bite deep and it's going to bite effective with minimal amounts of actual labor or me physically having to drive this tool into the wood. So the same cannot be said with this tool. So when we go over to the Husqvarna, you can see that it was originally ground or hand ground about up to here, but this was later machine ground with some form of machine to have a very, uh, very small and very, um, very obtuse kind of grind where the actual bevel of the edge, this is more of a bevel and less of a grind, comes very much toward the end of the blade, which ends up meaning, which it may be hard for you guys to see or not, We'll see how it comes out in the video, but you'll see that the actual cutting edge is very short. It's actually extremely small uh, on this particular edge, and hopefully I can kind of showcase that, but it's the actual cutting edge on this tool here is only about, I would say, a half inch, whereas at the peak on this cutting edge, you're dealing with about an inch of cutting edge. So there's a pretty big difference between the two and that is very felt when you actually use these types of tools. Now, once again, like I was saying, because this tool doesn't have ears or because there's really no cuts in the actual um, head here, it's just a very American patterned head. Um, it's also very heavy and you can feel it out here. And what a lot of people don't realize, especially when it comes to hatchets, is that you may value that weight and that heft in some form of a splitting axe but when we talk about hatchets especially uh you know hatchets are designed to just limb trees or do small tasks that extra weight is only going to incur a higher fatigue or essentially less strokes so this whole this husqvarna here really shows its uh, true colors and its price definitely comes out and while they say that it is handmade in Sweden, and I, like I said, I don't doubt that portion. What they don't tell you is that it's ultimately machine finished. In addition to this, the ergonomics of the handle, while they're okay, they're certainly not the best. Once again, looking at things like the Holtzbrook here, this is optimally what you want for good ergonomics. So instead of having these very deep, um, so instead of having very deep, and very pronounced um, kind of cuts here and here, you want more of an actual straight handle. Now it is important to have some cut and some shape to the handle so that it's ergonomic, but you don't want very deep cuts because that ultimately negatively impacts the ergonomics. And you can tell with things such as the uh, Grands, Grands Fours or Grands Fours Brooks or the GBA over here that it has practically none but it has practically no um, real curvature to it. It has very little curvature. In fact, it really just tapers down, really just tapers down from the uh, pole or where the head actually meets the uh, handle. It just tapers down and pretty much straightens out. And the same is pretty much to be said about this. And this ax is very well known, not just by me, but by the whole bushcrafting community GBAs have some of the best ergonomics. So you don't necessarily want very pronounced or very accentuated features like this hatchet has. So in the end, what I can say about all three of them, I will say that the build quality is actually pretty good on all three of them. I have no real complaints about fitment and um, grain orientation. 
they do actually, all three of them, have pretty good grain orientation and pretty good um, build quality. The steel on all three of them, I have yet to see any real issues. The thing with this Husqvarna is I think that it has a lot of good materials put into it. It just has a high level or rather a high lack of refinement. Um, this Holtzbruch and this GBA over here, while, you know, sometimes, especially with this GBA, four times the cost of this Husqvarna, you ultimately see it with things such as the ergonomics of the handle, the fitment, and the refinement of the blade. Now, this one, like I said, doesn't have the best fitment, but it is certainly passable, and I haven't noticed any extreme issues, aside from what was mentioned about the whole lack of refinement. Um, overall, I think that this is an axe that if you did get one, or hatchet I should say, that if you did get one of these husky hatchets, what I would recommend is spend the time, you know, take it to a belt sander and take this original uh, hand forged grind in here and just take it all out and make the edge more like the Holtzbruch and like the GBA. Uh, aside from that, there's really not a whole lot you can do to really cut ears into it. Ears have to be hand forged into it. So you will always have this heavy, blocky style of um, head, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Once again, this is very much an American patterned head. And I think the reason why Husqvarna has chosen that is because they try to gear this hatchet towards American buyers who are used to seeing this pattern and this style, whereas these two here that both have ears and, you know, these are very much uh, a Swedish style and design of hatchet and ax head, whereas this is definitely more of an American style. So this is appealing more towards Americans and what they like and what they know. And so I don't think that the head's necessarily bad. And I actually think that if you ground it to its original uh, hand forged grind marks, you actually probably knock some weight off of this tool. However, out of box, this tool definitely needs some refinement. In addition to this, I would also encourage, if at all possible, the replacement of the handle. However, I'm not sure that that's particularly feasible due to the fact that one thing that is a big knock to this handle is the fact that it's a very large head or a very large eye that they put on this ax or hatchet. I should say. In fact, I believe that they actually, th this eye size is more of an actual axe eye size. So as you can see, so as you guys can see here, this is a GBA, you know, this is a Scandinavian forest axe, which is one of their second largest, I think the second largest axe in the family of GBAs, and you can see that it has actually an even smaller eye than the Husky. So unfortunately, you won't necessarily be able to put something like a Holtzbruch handle, even though they're the same length, due to the fact that this eye is very large. So that is definitely a knock, and once again, that just goes back to a level of unrefinement that this tool possesses, or that it is, and so... I don't necessarily recommend it, but if you do have one, you can certainly salvage it by taking this original forge grind and actually physically grinding the blade back to that mark. That way you have a better cutting edge as opposed to this very abrupt or abrupt uh, bevel more than anything. So anyways, guys, hopefully this rambling hasn't forged too much. And as always, God bless and I'm out.